Hallo und herzlich willkommen zur Grand Line Besprechung, Ihre Quelle für alles von Peace. That was beautiful. It sounds so much better in German, I think. Hello and welcome to World of One Piece, the series where you all get to take a break from my opinions and look at someone else's experience with the series. Today we are featuring someone who, from her profile picture, is best described as an immortal witch, Siana. Welcome to the channel, Siana. Hey. Hello. Now, tell us a bit about yourself. Where are you from? How old are you? And what do you do for a living? Who is the real Siana? Okay, as you already said in your nice introduction, I'm an immortal witch and therefore I do not work. Well, I wish. Um, I am from Germany. I am currently working on getting my PhD in biochemistry, which hopefully, well, which I'm pretty sure will be done in January next year. And once I have my PhD, I'm going to look for a real job and earn real money. That is pretty amazing. So you're going to be a doctor, which automatically makes you the smartest person who will probably ever appear on this channel. Um, congratulations, that sounds awesome. You say that, but it's actually terrible. I mean, having a PhD, I guess, is worth it, but getting there is very... Yeah, no, I understand completely. My wife is also doing a PhD in clinical psychology, and it's, uh, it's a bit stressful. Yeah, you, you, you don't get paid all that well, and you have you basically don't have any fixed working hours, so you have to come by all the time and stay long, and sometimes even come by on the weekend, and nothing ever works, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, I can imagine. But whereabouts in Germany are you from? So I was born actually next to the Dutch border in a town called Aachen, which none of you can pronounce. No, I can't um, even spell actually, it in my head. <laughs> it's A-A-C-H-E-N. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, but I, I didn't actually grow up there. We moved to a tiny, tiny, tiny village somewhere near the Swiss border. Um, but I wanted to to go to university, so I had to move, and I moved to the tiny, um, not so tiny city of Munich. Yeah, not tiny at all. Which is where I am <laughs> now. Yeah, it's I think the third biggest city in Germany. So tell me, Siana, the immortal witch from Munich, how did you first become aware of One Piece? Through uh, German television. So they they started. I think it started started with Pokemon. That was the first, and then. Sailor Moon and One Piece and Digimon, they all came and I I really liked it, so I watched all these anime. I have to say that the German dub did a much, much better job than 4Kids did. It wasn't perfect, but it was better quality and we didn't get as badly censored as you guys with uh, Sanji chewing on lollipops and stuff like that. Uh, Sanji... So that's how I got into it. Yeah, Sanji chewing yeah. on a lollipop was nowhere near the worst of it. I can actually appreciate that. I mean, you don't want to send a bad message about smoking to kids. It's the more crazy stuff like cutting out the entire laboon arc that really sort of irks yeah, me about that, that it. Yeah, was, that was very weird on your part. Yeah, there's well, the, the, not your part, was, but the, the Can you not part. blame me for the entire 4Kids edit? But but you are, you are, you are to blame for everything. Uh, uh, yeah, well, that's what most okay. of my YouTube Wh where commenters was would have I? me believe. I asked you how you first became aware of One Piece, but when yes, so did you uh, first become aware? That's how I discovered it through beautiful television and I, d I honestly don't remember the proper order of everything but then also the manga market started to grow in Germany so we got lots of manga released and at some point I bought the I, I don't know how they're called in English but it was called One Piece Blue and One Piece Red oh, the, um, the, German. The, uh, the data books so these yes and I, I bought them I never actually bought the manga but I, I read those and and I kept watching the anime, but because they, they were behind on dubbing everything, so they reran the Alabasta arc and the Skypea arc, and it just got so tiresome because I wanted to know what happens next and not watch the Skypea arc for the fourth time. So at some point I, I stopped actually watching, and then after some years I discovered that online scanlations were actually a thing, and I was still interested in One Piece, but I hadn't watched it in forever and I thought okay either I start reading the manga now which was already I had at least 400 or so chapters at that point or I start watching the anime and I decided on the manga because I'm lazy and it takes less time and that's when I started but I can't remember when that was it just it had to have been I, some time I can probably tell you if there was only like 400 chapters cuz that was I, I'm I'm guessing at this number it could I just know it was several hundreds it could be more or less. I honestly don't know. 
I mean, the only the only thing I know for sure it had to have been before Marine Four, or in the very least during early Marine Four, because I remember watching a few anime episodes at the time when the anime was at Marine Four at the time, and I was like, oh yeah, the manga is much faster and doesn't stall so much on all these little events going on. So at that time, I must have already been reading the manga, but that's all I remember. <laughs> Manga is a beautiful thing, but before we move on to that, I just want to uh, talk to you about the German One Piece dub. I've heard there were quite a few like interesting changes made, like Hachi being female. What was different about the German dub to, say, One Piece as we know it? Uh, but the most obvious thing is just how they named, or how they changed names of people and things. I mean, some of them are fairly innocuous, others I, I had to get used to. Um, they they changed uh, Mihawk's name, for example. They changed Usopp's name. What did they the change release. them to? So Usopp is based on the Japanese word for lie, Uso. So in German, they used the German word for lie, which is Lüge or Lügen. Yeah. And they <laughs> took that and made Lüsop out of it, so it sounds like Lügen. Oh, that's Sop, that's not too bad. That actually sounds moderately clever. It's maybe. like if they they call them Lysop or something in English. Lysop. Yeah. So, for, to me, he's still a sub, but I had really had a, have a hard time getting used <laughs> to Usopp. And um, they also changed um, Luffy's name, actually, and Ace's name. Not to Trace, but they changed his to, to, to Puma, the Ace. Puma being the German word for cougar. Oh. And Luffy is, Luffy is not called Luffy, he's called Monkey D. Raffi. And so it, it took me a while to get used to that, that it's Luffy and not Raffi anymore, but... I mean, these are fairly small changes. That's amazing. I would actually love to sit down and watch the German dub one day, because I've seen a few of the openings, and I'm intrigued, at least for the comic value of it. At, at least our openings aren't as bad as a One Piece rap. Look, you're just jealous that you don't have a cool rap opening, okay? We have the German Naruto opening. There is nothing in the world that is worse than that. <laughs> I've not seen that. I will have to look into it. Y you should. You you're gonna you're gonna regret your life choices, but you should watch it. It's it's an experience. Uh, so where are you up to in the series so far? I'm up to date. Ah, excellent. I love you already. Aww. So what do you think of uh? How shall I put this? Current events. I I am very excited. I mean, Whole Cake Island was a bit of a letdown. Um, oh, but really? Wano in what way? It's. I mean, the thing is that it didn't seem so much like a like a goal on the road or like something in the way that they had to overcome. It seemed a lot like a detour, an important detour because they had to retrieve Sanji, obviously. But it didn't feel like there was anything for them to achieve there other than getting Sanji back. And then we were teased with maybe Luffy is facing up against uh, uh, Big Mom after all, but he didn't. And I mean, the Luffy Katakuri fight wasn't bad and it was and I also like Katakuri as a character like literally everyone else, but I just didn't... It felt a little bit pointless as a whole, even though they did achieve their goals of getting Sanji back and uh, getting the Poneglyph readings and everything. It just felt like it was in the way of them finally getting to Wano. Yeah, I understand completely. I personally quite liked the whole Cake Island arc, but I understand because as soon as we started the events of Wano and Reverie, it was like, wow, why did we need the last two years? We could have jumped straight from Zo to Wano and everything would have been magical. The, the Reverie arc thingy is actually the reason why I joined your Discord in the first place, because I wanted to talk to people about One Piece and we don't actually talk about One Piece, but whatever. <laughs> it's true. It's pretty much the the only thing we'd never talk about on my discord server <laughs> so what i think of the current events um so yes i'm excited about wano i, I would love to get closure on all the stuff open at the reverie so why was shanks there what is the deal with bonnie who is Eam? <sighs> everything but uh, i guess we have to wait on that well one piece wouldn't be one piece if it just gave you the answers to the questions it posed to you yeah it would be happy if it just stopped posing so many questions <laughs> that is so rude yeah, that, that's very rude anyway, of her to do. I, I am very excited, although I have to say the last chapter was a bit too rushed for my liking because the pacing was a bit off and stuff. They talked about something and then the next panel was 
the complete shift in tone and it was very very confusing but I'm still excited. I, I felt that way as well, just for anyone listening to this in the future. The most recent chapter is 912. It's the one where Luffy all of a sudden runs into Zoro, and then all of a sudden runs into Hawkins, and it's all very sudden and weird, and not really sort of the usual way that Oda does these things, which is magnificently. Where, where did Zoro even come from? I mean, last time you saw of him, he was slicing a house in half, and then he was somewhere else, and yeah, something. Like, I assume that because of that, he's now on the run. And so he just yeah. went in a random direction and Luffy just happened to stumble upon him and then Hawkins happened to stumble upon them. And uh, I don't know. How convenient. It's, yeah, how very convenient. Exactly. That's exactly how it felt. I'm still excited. So speaking of excitement, what is it about One Piece that like really keeps you invested in the series as a whole? That's a good question, and I would say it's the characters, because, I mean, there are, first of all, a lot of them, but and Oda has this talent that even the smallest side characters or characters that barely have any screen time seem really interesting and worthwhile watching to see what they do next. But also his core characters are, I mean, not all of the straw heads are developed equally well, but especially in the earlier seasons, in earlier arcs, there was a lot of character development going on and some characters have changed so much, and not just physically, but also from their, from their growth. And it's just very fascinating um, how well he actually establishes so many characters and plays them off each other. And I mean, I, I love so many One Piece characters. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy just how he manages to make these random side characters so unique as well like they all have their own very individual personalities which is really difficult to do when you're building an entire world full of people and ma make them stand out e even after 20 years of characters and then there's another character who's completely new but he stands out in one reason or another uh, another thing i really like is that oda I mean, this isn't always true, but a lot of the stuff that happens, Oda has set up way, way earlier than it actually occurred. I mean, the whole Sanji thing was was set up way early. The the whole Sabo reveal, the the childhood with a Sabo and uh, Luffy, Raffi, <laughs> was set I up. I think you'll find it is Raffi. Yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> was set up very early, and then of course you have like the, the opposite of that when he. I learned it recently, actually, that he came up with uh, the, the the eleven supernova characters like in four hours or something, and I'm just so stunned by this because I thought they were like they must have been planned out over a long period of time. We just chucked them out of his sleeve, and oh yeah, I need some characters. Oh, let's let's make a funny uh, mafia guy and some guy who who trumpets on his nose or whatever. You can trumpet from everywhere, I'm assuming. Yeah, I don't know how long it took him, but. They were definitely not in the original plan for the arc, but he and his editors thought that um, Sabadi wasn't going to be exciting enough. So then he just went away, made nine, you know, amazing characters out of nowhere. And they're some of the most intriguing people in the entire series now. Yeah, and some of them are seem to be also wrapped up in events, in world events. I mean, see it, Bonnie, and it's just... It's so amazing that it all comes together so well, even though not everything is planned out. And it, it, it's 21... I mean, today is actually the 21st birthday of One Piece. Yes, happy birthday, One Piece. Yay! Anyway, so tw 21 years of storytelling and it still hasn't fallen apart. And if you look at Naruto or Bleach, who definitely showed their age at some point, or the, the wear of having to come up with a long-running series. And then you have One Piece who just keeps going on strong. Yeah, definitely. They were the big three, and uh, I would say that two of them did fall quite far from grace. One much further than the other. Yeah, but uh, Tita Kubo never actually wanted to draw a long-running series, so I guess I was inevitable. Well, there's this thing. From the beginning, he has admitted that he was lazy, and he doesn't really plan things in advance and just kind of goes with the flow, so I'm not sure what anyone really expected from Bleach. He was kind of, you know, pressured into continuing the series and... Yeah fucked Shonen Jump, I guess. But at the same time, thank you Shonen Jump for uh, continuing to produce One Piece. Fuck Shonen Jump. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, I want to get back to what you said about characters. Who would be your favorite character out of all of these amazing oh, people? That's Shanks, He's... obviously. Shanks. Ah, very nice. Because choice. he has red hair. Is that it? Yes. No. Um. I mean, I honestly can't say why. I mean, he he doesn't have much screen time, but he is my favorite character, and I think it's because he's. I mean, from the moment we first saw him, there were already hints that he's a badass. <laughs> because the whole attitude of, you know, you can dump your drink on me and I don't care, but as soon as you insult my crewmates, you're you're like, you're you're on it, you you get hit or something. And then, of course, the whole he stares uh, Sea King into submission, and we didn't know it was Haki at the time, so it was really badass. But then, and then he, he just lost an arm and it was like, he was like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. And I mean, it, you, you have to be a badass for that. And then just, he didn't show, he doesn't show up a lot, but every time he does, we, we get like, it gets more and more obvious how badass he is. I mean, by the time um, when Mihawk comes by to visit him to tell him of Luffy's bounty, we already know that Mihawk is a fucking killer swordsman. Like who just he, he's like really strong, and and and, and he, he just goes to Shanks, and they seem to be buddies. And you're like, okay, wow, they're friends. So Shanks must be also really cool. Then he goes to visit Whitebeard and just knocks out half the crew just by being awesome, I guess. And then and he just goes and stops a war between a Yonko yeah, and, and the just, entirety of the Marines. It just keeps happening, and, and you're like, what the fuck? And like, we, we don't know anything about him. We, we, we don't know, does he have a devil's fruit? Doesn't he... Does he even need one? And then it's not just him. I mean, his crew is also seems to be really, really badass. When when there was a scene in the in the Paramount War when Kizaru wanted to, I think he wanted to shoot at Luffy and Jimbi, Jim, Jimbe. Ugh. And and then uh, Ben Beckman was just there. Yeah, I don't think so. And points a gun at him. And Kizaru is like, Oh no! Oh my, Ben Beckman. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, 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 I really, really want to know who who is Shang. It's like, what's his story? Like, how did he become a Yonko? And I mean, we know from Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom that they have territory. But did Shang ever have territory? And if not, why is he a Yonko? Or why was why is he a Yonko? What makes him a Yonko? Like, what the hell? We do know that he has territory uh, because of the cover story where Bartolomeo uh, claimed one of Shanks's islands as Luffy's. Oh yeah, I don't remember that. But other than that, you're right. We know absolutely nothing about him, which is mind-boggling for a character who was introduced in Chapter 1 21 years ago. Yeah, it's just, I think this is the kind of thing I really, really... I mean, generally my, my favorite characters on One Piece are the ones that are a bit mysterious or we don't know a lot about, but who seem to be really cool, and Shanks is just the king of them all. Very interesting. I can't fault that choice at all. Every time Shank shows up, the One Piece world just stops. I think I actually screamed when he showed up in, in chapter, what was it, 907 or something? So when he showed up at the girl scene, I just like, I, I just I started screaming or something. And then, <laughs> of course, we, we'll never, we never find out what happens, like, who are they talking about? And I'm just so, why? We will. It'll just be years and years down the line. Yeah, I, I probably... Uh, I don't know. I've forgotten everything by then. I had a very similar reaction to you, though, in regards to Shanks when he uh, showed up during Marineford, because that arc was just awesomeness upon awesomeness. And then the last thing I expected was to just see Shanks rock up and be a badass. And I probably yeah. did scream when I read that. And then and he just casually stops uh, Akainu's lava fist with his sword like it's nothing. And I just think, why? <laughs> how? What? How, how are you so awesome? And then there's his whole history with, you know, the Pirate King, because he was on his ship and possibly went to Rough Tell and just there's so much to know about this man. And, and don't forget, he was a cabin boy alongs alongside Buggy the Clown, the most amazing pirate on, this, on the, all the seas. That's true. That's actually Shanks' biggest claim to fame, is that he was a rookie pirate with Buggy. That's so amazing. The buggy of all people. Oh, Captain Buggy Summer. But uh, moving away from this and going in the complete opposite direction, who do you think would be your least favorite character in the series? Oh god, I think Steli. It's just the first that comes to mind. <laughs> Steli is a safe choice. I quite like that. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is that uh, there is a. I mean, it, it is like quite a few characters, but not so much for them being bad characters, but just because they're assholes or something. So I, I also quite dislike Akaino, not because he's again a bad character, but because he he's a bad guy, and I just want him to fucking die. The bitch. That's interesting. I. 
I feel the same way about Arcanu, but at the same time, I love him as a character because of that. I really enjoy his presence in this story, and that it fills me with that kind of No, nah, I just want to kill him. <laughs> Fair enough. Is there any character in the series that you think is just a bad character? Ugh, Foxy. I don't know. Aww. Yeah, I think Poor that Foxy. is. Foxy. I haven't actually thought so much about it, but I think Oda doesn't really have that many bad character character. Okay, some of his, most of his female characters are very bland. Bland, yes, and. That's, I mean, the thing is, they're not bad characters per se. Like Robin, for example, Nami, they have, well, they had a lot of potential. They were very well developed as characters, and then a time skip happened, and they just, ugh. I mean, I still like Robin and Nami, but they're just so dull, and they always wear, like, these really weird, impractical, but oh, sexy clothes, and ugh, I can't see cleavage anymore. I really miss the days where Robin and Nami used to do something. Quite specifically when they used to have proper fights as you know Straw Hat crew members do or every other crew member does except them now. I mean I get it. I mean the way they did it in Alabasta or, or in Indies Lobby where everyone has their own fight is maybe a bit too much to ask if you have nine, nine, <laughs> nine characters to, um, um, to cover but it's just so sad because especially Robin has so much potential. I mean her devil's fruit is fucking OP or it would be if it had burned the head hands of a male character. I mean, just give her armament hockey or something, and she just doesn't... I mean, even if she does something, she, she there's a scene in Dressrosa where, where she catches Law with her net, like she, she grows her arms into a net, and that's pretty cool, but then, then Dofi comes and, and is about to attack, and she just stares and is like, oh no! And I'm just like, you can, like, I don't know, make a giant hand and try to defend yourself or anything. Like, just do something. And he just doesn't. And then kind of, I think Kevin just shows up and, uh, uh, one second, that's my mother calling. Okay, where was I? So, yeah, she she just doesn't do anything. And then Kevin just shows up and saves her. Or what was it, Bartholomew? Someone shows up and saves her. It doesn't matter. And it's Which just kind of is such a huge shame because you said her fruit, like her powers could be so OP. They are. They actually are. When she uses them to like fly and create giant limbs, it's amazing. And you just wonder why she's not allowed to, you know, have a proper fight. Because she has boobies. Because she has boobies. And post time skip, Oda has changed his attitude towards women being in combat. Take like Rebecca, for example. A character who was a gladiator who never actually really hurt anyone. Oh god, I fucking hate Rebecca. She's actually a bad character. Yeah, I think so too. She's she's more of a vehicle to make um Kuros a good character rather than a character of her own. There's just so much wrong with her and then why why is she wearing the like, chainmail bikini and ugh <laughs> Yeah, I I wish women would have a much stronger presence in One Piece. Probably the best female character we've seen in recent years is Big Mom herself. Yeah, because she, she's too old to, to have to live up to the whole uh, sexy character thing. But I mean, we, we've seen a drawing of her when she was younger, and of course she was sexy, so... Uh, I miss, like, when we had characters like Kureha. 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 Yes, Kureha. She is fantastic. I love Kureha. Yeah, she's great. But even, but, you know... I mean, she, she's been years ago. Even the standard beautiful female characters, they did used to have proper character about them, like the original Nami story, I mean, like, Robin, Nami, Vivi. Nami didn't look so bad. She was actually decently dressed. I mean, okay, the skirts may, may have been a bit impractical, but I had no qualms with her. Qualms? Qualms? With Quams, how she yes. was dressed, and then, then, then now she's wearing bikinis, and she doesn't have a waist anymore. Yeah, and the boobs keep getting bigger and bigger, and her actual involvement in the story keeps getting lesser and lesser. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a shame. It is a shame. So let's move on from that. I'd like to ask you another question: What devil fruit would you most like to have, and why? Existing devil fruit, or can I make up? Can I make one up by myself? Ah, uh, you know what? Let's make up a devil fruit. Why not? Go for it. <laughs> the rainbow banana, obviously. Ah, uh, you're gonna have to explain that for anyone who's not a member no, of the I'm Discord server. No, I'm actually kidding. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to have the rainbow banana. <laughs> oh, but I mean, it was okay, so cool. Let, 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 let's answer it in, in, in both parts. Existing devil fruits, oh god, I, I think probably lost fruit. It's just, it's so versatile and, well, as, as the name already says, it's OP. 
Yep, and given that you're I mean, going it, to become it, it a does... doctor, mm, suits you very well. Yeah, but I, I'm not a not not a medicine. I assume it would help you in your experiments as yeah, well. Yeah, probably. It's just, I mean, okay, it has the drawback, and it it, it takes a uh, it takes a lot of stamina to use, but just the the, sh- the sheer amount of bullshit moves Law can pull is just ridiculous. I mean, the whole shredding Doffy's organs. I mean, of course, Doffy just stitched himself up, so whatever. But just be just to be able to do that and taking people's hearts, switching their personality. I mean, seriously. Yeah, with like the flick of a finger, you can switch people's bodies. And let's not forget that it does cost you your life, but you can actually make someone immortal. Yeah, I would never do that. But it just, it's a stupidly powerful fruit. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. Okay, so if you had to make up a devil fruit to eat, what would that be? This is, act- this is actually my, 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 uh, my first entry. I, I like to come up with, like, interesting uh, characters myself, and then usually I give them some sort of power. So that's how I originally came up with that devil fruit. I had to adapt it a little bit for the contest because the way I imagined it was way too OP. I like apparently I like OP things. Um, it's a so I, I made it essentially like a a, a a relative to the kage kage no mi, so that is to to the shadow to the shadow gecko fruit. fruit yeah. And it's but it has nothing to do with that other than it's based on shadows and essentially allows you to travel through shadows. So basically you, you jump into your own shadow so to speak and then can step out of someone else's shadow and stab them in the back or something <laughs> it's a very sneaky power very sneaky power I don't, you don't, surely you don't have to stab someone in the back you can just travel by but shadow well, where is the fun in not stabbing people in the back like so with that devil fruit you go into your own shadow do you sort of like um blue Eno's devil fruit do you go into like a shadow dimension like he goes into a door dimension or do you just like instantly reappear out of someone else's shadow um so it's actually both in a way so the way i imagine is because i like op things is that you essentially step into this sort of in between space um and once you're in there time is time stops in the real world so Whoa. you could theoretically <laughs> just hang out there forever and just chill or whatever i mean it doesn't really change much because when once you're there you can't affect anything and in the real world you just i mean the thing that the most useful appliance would be you, you just change your position so you step into your shadow and then take take out your knife step out of your shadow and stab someone with it so that would be the application so yeah essentially you can stop time but it does require a shadow is there like a limit on how big a shadow or how dark it would need to be for you to appear in it or could you Uh, (laughs) no i mean as i said in an original way that it didn't actually need a shadow you could just the the mechanic is a bit different and and now how i originally envisioned it but for the sake of having an actual balanced power um, so it has to be the shadow of a living thing. So yeah, you could theoretically step into the shadow of your cat, but not in the shadow of a I don't know mouse or something. It would be too small. And I think I, in the description I even mentioned that if you if the shadow is too small, you might you might get constipation or something. But it's just I just wanted to imply that you you can just squeeze through every shadow because it might give you some problems. Um, the bigger you are, obviously. So Kaido I think wouldn't even fit through a cat cat's shadow or even a, or would have difficulty squeezing through the shadow of a normal person. It's probably one of the most true statements I've heard all day. Kaido would not be able to fit through a cat. <laughs> Where is the lie? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from uh, amazing devil fruit powers, if you were to choose an island in the Grand Line to visit, which one would it be and why? I, I would want to hang out on whatever island Shanks currently is. But if we were to choose one that, you know, we actually know about, and not a character, <laughs> like, you know... <laughs> oh god. I mean, I would like Whole Cake Island, because everything is made from candy or cake, but I do not want to give my life energy, life years, whatever, to Big Mom, so probably not. Although I, I am immortal, so I guess I would be fine. Uh, allegedly, yeah, but yes. other than that... I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not really keen on living in the desert, but I think Alabasta would be nice to live in just because the people, like the like the king and the princess are pretty nice. And I don't know, I have never thought about this. And, and most islands, 
most islands came with some sort of problem or trouble to be solved, so that's how I remember them. I mean, Dressrosa must be nice to live in before Doffy, but... And, and after Doffy. Yeah, but have you seen how Dressrosa looked after the birdcage was done? I don't want to be there and help building, rebuilding everything. <laughs> All right, well, in that case, let's ask a, a deep question. What is your most memorable moment in the entire series? Oh, God. Um, everything Shanks has ever done. Yeah, how did I know that answer was <laughs> No, coming? I think it... I'll rephrase the question. What is your most memorable non-Shanks moment in the series? I, I was going to give you a serious answer to that question involving <laughs> Shanks, but okay, I guess. Okay, no, no, go ahead and give you a serious answer. So, I think it would it would be, in fact, the... I mean, the thing is, the, the whole Marine Ford art was just bonkers. I mean, it was really great. So much stuff was going on. And so many small things that happened are already, like, I, that, that, I, that, that, that stick to my memory. Just small stuff, like Whitebeard asking his crew to protect Luffy and stuff like that. But the one moment that really stood out... Um, well, actually, it's two moments. One, of course, is when... Ace gets fisted, <laughs> but I don't like to remember that moment. So, um, and the other is, of course, when when you when you think like Kobe's gonna bite it, and then Shanks just shows up, and then everything that happens after. So he's like, "Yeah, stop the war," and, and then 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 Goku is like, "Yeah, okay," and you're just like, "What the hell?" He he's like one guy with a sword, and 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 we don't know anything what he can do, and he just snaps his fingers and the war is over. Yeah, you say it so casually, but that's kind of how it happened. Shanks was like, if anyone else wants to fight, I'm here. And Sengoku's like, nope. Blackbeard's like, nah. -uh. I, I kind of wish Blackbeard had taken him up on it and had, got, had gotten his ass kicked or something. As Blackbeard said, he wasn't prepared to fight Shanks. Just <sighs> You can never be prepared to fight Shanks. Pretty ominous warning for the future. I mean, the two of them have faced off already, so I guess Blackbeard would know. Yes, also, I want to know how, how, like, when did this happen with the scars, like, how lo how much longer will I have to wait to finally learn everything I want to know about Shanks? I'd say another 21 years. Ugh. Very good. But in the meantime, it is time for some One Piece trivia. Don't sound so excited. I'm so excited. So, I have six questions for you. Three of them are easy, two of them are medium. One of them is hard. The easy questions are worth one point, medium two, and the hard is worth three. Are you prepared no. to take the One Piece trivia challenge? I'm gonna fail. Yes, fantastic. Let's do it. What is the name of Nico Robin's home island? Ohara. That is correct. See, this isn't so this bad. This is the easy question. It would be sad if I didn't know that. Yes. Ah, shit. <laughs> this question's probably far too easy given what we just spoke about. Who gave Shanks the scar on his eye? Uh, I think it was Whitebeard. No, it was Blackbeard first. <laughs> well, technically he wasn't Blackbeard then. He was he was still using his actual name, which is Marshall D. Teach. That is 100% correct. Well done. Which member of the worst generation was a marine before becoming a pirate? So I call him X-Drake, but apparently he's pronounced D as something Drake. I don't get this, so I call him X-Drake, whatever. Yeah, I also call him x -Drake because it sounds cool. And that is correct. So that, that's a very good start. You got all of the easy questions right. We're moving to the medium section now. And the first one is, in what area of the world did the Straw Hats first meet Brooke? So it was a Florine, Florine triangle thingy? Is that what you mean? That is correct. Well done. Yes. You, you, you gotta tell me how, how bad the droid fared in these questions later. <laughs> I can. I actually asked him different questions to Yeah, you. but I still wanna know if I beat his points. Uh, I'll let you know when we're done. How many siblings does Princess Shirahoshi have? Three. Three is correct. You've gotten both of the medium questions right. And now we are going to the one final hard question. At least seven. Is that your answer before <laughs> I ask the question? <laughs> right, right, you're counting your points. Yes, at least seven. Very good. But your hard question is, following Buggy's defeat by Luffy, who briefly assumed the role of captain of the former Buggy pirates? Oh god, it, w it was either the, the, the lion guy or the cabbage guy. <laughs> I think it was Kabachi. <laughs> Kabaji, the acrobat. I have no idea. It's 50-50 at this point. It probably was a lion or something. No, I, I think it it was the... the how, how do you even say it in English? Juggler? Kabaji guy? 
the one on the on the on the tiny kabaji. tiny tiny tricycle yeah. thingy. Yeah, kabaji. Yes, that's for my final answer. Oh, you were so close. The actual answer is Richie the lion. I knew it. Yeah, but I wouldn't have remembered the lion's name anyway. That's okay. You could have just said the lion and I would have given it to you because I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So you got 7 out of 10. Well done. And I'll inform you that Droid only scored 5 out of 10. Fail. Yeah, I don't know if he's good enough to be a Yonko with only 5 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If we applied that criteria to all of the Yonko, it would probably be pretty... Bad. You probably run out of young Yonkos fairly fast. So, I would like to ask you one final question, and that is, what is the One Piece? It's me, obviously, because I'm the greatest treasure in the world. You are the One Piece. Well, wow, this is this is breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've never really considered, like, I never really thought of it that hard about what the one piece could possibly be because the one piece isn't really the point of the story it's it's like it's a uh, yeah it's a, the MacGuffin if you want it, it, it's there to get the ball rolling but it doesn't really matter what it is like it could just be like an empty empty treasure crew, crew chest chest is a word empty treasure chest with a I don't know like a note pinned to it you made it hooray or something and it didn't change wouldn't change the story all that much I mean Luffy Luffy doesn't want to find the one piece because he's in the treasure he wants to find it to become the pirate king so it, it's it's not, it's not even actually about the one piece like it's completely irrelevant if you want if you will monkey d raffi could not have said that better himself so yeah that's why my answer is i am the one piece because i'm the greatest treasure in the world and you brought it back around to that well thank you very much for sharing your perspective on the series siana it was a pleasure to have you on and not just be talking to myself for a change you're welcome you can direct your payment to the fire <laughs> <laughs> And if you'd like to be featured on the next World of One Piece, then all you need to do is become a Grand Line Review Patron. Upon becoming a patron of any tier, your name automatically goes into the draw to become my next guest. And very, very importantly, your name then stays in the draw for all subsequent episodes throughout your tenure as a patron. With that said, I'd like to thank Sienna once more for being an amazing guest, and I look forward to interviewing our next lucky individual soon. That's the Grand Line Rückblick, and I'll see you next time.